Hello, my wealthy wives and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent romance. How are you doing, wealthy wives and friends? I know I went MIA again this week, but you know what? It has been an amazing week. I've had a chance to actually put into practice some of the things I have been teaching all of you all of last week in reference to how to be that priestess and knowing how to be present with that beautiful warrior you know protector provider masculine energy that is once again so fucking yummy oh my gosh it's the best and I had some additional things come through that actually are going to be going into the new master class before I forget and I was going to post earlier this week, but I literally have been just beautifully busy this week. Didn't get a chance to do it. The master class starts not tomorrow, the 14th. It's not starting on uh, the 14th. It's being pushed until Saturday, August 21st. Same time, 3 p.m. Eastern, but it's starting on August 21st instead. Um, last weekend, when we had, you know, the whole, you know, just the thing coming at the Lions Gate and the energies and downloads and oh my god I kid you guys not I so love being me and receiving life the way I receive life because so much information comes through and I had a chance to actually actually want to make some changes to the curriculum to the class that's why it's being pushed off by a week but they're really great changes because once again we're learning how to embody the priestess energy because we've been working on the muse the muse is very very important because once again you have no purpose without knowing thyself hear me you will never know your true purpose for being or things that you're meant to do until you know thyself. You must know self. So the muse is incredibly important because while, yes, she is the inspiration of others, she only becomes that by becoming true to self. And I'm loving it that I'm seeing the word muse out there more often. One of my goddaughters had told me she was noticing, as a matter of fact, a couple of them did, I come to think of it, that they were noticing that other women are using the word muse. I think that's quite lovely. I do. I was like, you realize I go, I don't listen to a lot of uh, information because I'm just busy enough as I am. But I did notice somebody that I do listen to periodically. She used the word muse. I was like, wow. All right, good. Good. I think it's great because once again, the muse is a self-realized, self-loving, self-knowing, self-just whatever phenomenal woman. But once again, you must know yourself before you can do anything else you desire to do. Because you are the foundation. Your emotional, mental, physical, spiritual state of being is what also takes you into the realms of finance. Because as I always say, money, the currency of um, currency of money, you know, the finances is a feminine energy. And once again, as a woman, you understand how to be in the flow. Stop trying to do, 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 and learn how to actually be in that flow, that energy. You'll be amazed how your life shows up and how much easier things become because your space is grace and ease. So as we now move into the priestess phase, learning how to once again now truly embody the spiritual side to really tap into the divine femininity, divine feminine energy of the absolute, absolute energy of um, grace and ease. And learning how to flourish and thrive once again in a way that really ties into who we are as women learning how to be in that space where once again we are the nurturers we are the healers we are we are a type of wisdom that has been neglected for far too long because many women have no idea how to be in the space of priestess because for so long once again this is no criticism please hear me no criticism just stating a fact you know, not taught how to be that priestess energy, how to be that in that space of the divine feminine because she was taken out of most religious doctrines, gosh, years ago, which is very important. Not all. There are some faiths that still practice her and her spiritual practices, obviously, that are based upon her and actually are incorporating her as we speak. But it has been a long time coming. So as a woman, how are you going to understand how to be in a space of a priestess who honors the divinity within her if you've been taught the divine stands outside of you? See, that's most of my problem with organized religion at times. They teach you that you are unworthy because you just are. I'm like, that's not a good enough reason. You are divinity. The spark of life, the spark of divine, the spark moves through you. That is the energy that animates you. That is the energy that you, that first breath you took as a newborn, that was the energy that came into your body, that animated your body independent of your mom. 
lot of people don't think of it that they don't realize like you realize I'll say this again I know I've said other videos when a woman is pregnant because remember every human being every person comes through her comes through a woman's body but when that body that baby is being you know created and developed and, and happening it is connected to mom breath heartbeat food everything it is in symbiosis with mom it does not become an individual entity you know in its own sovereignty so to speak until it leaves mom's body and takes its first breath until that point in time mom and baby literally are one and having been pregnant three times i can say that's a pretty awesome experience it really is i just i marvel at the fact that i actually had the privilege and the honor and just oh my gosh the, the ability to bring three wonderful young men into this world that spent nine months approximately inside of me to leave and to become sovereign entities in and of, in and of themselves. So when I talk about the priestess energy, that's what I'm talking about. Going back to understanding how to be. Because the nurturing always, always start with self. Everything always, always, always starts with self. How you care for self. How you take care of yourself. How you honor yourself. What are you doing with your body temple? I'm laughing right now because I'm seeing all this. This I don't know. This is, I have to laugh because how they decide to do the marketing and propaganda. I guess the thing now going around is don't bathe. I'm like, what? I'm sure you guys have seen it because it's coming across my Instagram feed. So I'm mentioning it. Once again, minds are easily swayed. I was like, okay. It's gross, just so you know. I think it's really disgusting. The reason being is you accumulate so much junk on your skin throughout the course of just living your day. The stuff that's in the air, oh my gosh, where I live, they chemtrail constantly. I was laughing because it's just it's so heavy. I remember looking at my kitchen window one day. This is how heavily they chemtrail some days. There is a mountain that I can literally see from my kitchen window. I can see it. It's gigantic, right? I remember looking at my window a couple of days, two, three days ago. I couldn't even see it. The stuff hanging in the air was so heavy. I couldn't see the mountain. Let me tell you how serious that is. So for people to say that you should not be bathing, washing off your body, I realize, you know, we're taking, if you don't have filters on your shower, you're taking in some, you know, chemicals in, in, into the water, into your body as well. But still, you can buy a filter for your shower that will filter out the toxins in the water. Just saying. And I'm sharing this because how you care for your body temple has a lot to do with your health and well-being of you physically emotionally, spiritually, mentally. And when you step back in the space of once again of knowing self as that divine woman that you are, remember you are the Holy Grail. I'm not speaking out the side of my neck, that is a fact. A woman who truly understands how to be empowered as the most amazing and the most sumptuous and the most just phenomenal person that she is, entity that she is, being that she is, whatever you want to call it, you are priceless because it's in that space of being, in that space of, of loving life and cherishing self. It makes it so much easier for us to be in that space to pour into others that we choose to pour into. Because having said this, it doesn't mean we have to be pouring into everyone. Because there are some vessels that are just bottomless pits. They will never be satisfied. They will never be filled because they're not working on self. And if that's their option and choice, then that means, okay, let them go do them. And we're going to just step over here and go do us. I've said before, I honor people in whatever position, whatever decision they make in reference to their life. I honor that. Some folks love being miserable. Some folks love whatever chaos they're creating. It is their thing. Okay, great. You go do you. I'm going to go do me over here. Because I have that option and I choose that option all the time. <laughs> but that comes because once again I know self 
and not saying I know everything about me, but I know I've been cultivating myself pretty much since I got here. So as the years have passed and I grow older and wiser and have life experiences, some really great, some really just not so great, but as I have accumulated, accumulated energy and information and learned how to basically sift off whatever no longer serves me and to take what does serve me and elevate it and become better and then invite the energy of really great people into my world. And I'll say it again, my goddaughters and muses, oh my gosh. I, I, I just, I don't know, I'm stuttering, but I'm just so, I love them so much. I mean, I sincerely love these women because they are exceptional. And I love when I hear from them because, like I said, the ones that do stay tapped in and the ones I do hear from, you know, that come back either in the master classes with me or private tutor or doing or one-on-one -on -one consultation or just when they tap in with, you know, emails and a handful actually have my, my cell phone number um, just because some of the stuff that we actually do. Um, but I love hearing about their successes. I love, love, love hearing about their successes and how they're thriving and to get these excited emails when they're doing something where they where they've shifted the paradigm and now they're living a broader life they're living a more more luxurious and sumptuous life because they're now choosing to be authentic they're now choosing to allow themselves to have these great experiences it's about being fearless. Once again, no recklessness, but being fearless because you overstand, once again, who you are. And as that priestess energy, and because we're tapping into everything, that means you have the, you allow yourself the freedom to learn. Because as I've mentioned about ancient priestesses, these were highly intelligent women. Highly intelligent. They were well-versed in reading, writing, arithmetic, I guess, <laughs> science. All sciences that could have been chemistry biology astronomy astrology numerology sexuality they were well versed in the, in the on the energy of sex because if you don't remember sex is the energy that draws and drives everything because it's creative energy everything is sexual energy just because you know they have you convinced that sex is just about the bump and grind the bump and grind is part of it but even that should be done with thought you should be thoughtful about who you're doing this with. People out there really really just doing stuff and wondering why they feel the way they feel because you're pulling all the energy into your body and you're not learning how to clean it out of you or learning how to have discernment in reference to who you allow to tap into you. No judgment here, I'm speaking facts. Everything is energy. So as the priestess, you're very conscious of the decisions you're making and you're taking the time out to gain the wisdom that you need to know to really move yourself forward in a way that's going to definitely elevate your life, but also the ones who are going to come to you and spend time with you. And as we move into discussing the warrior, the, oh my God, the ultimate, I tell you, he is the ultimate protective provider. <sighs> oh my, I love them. I just, you know, the energy of that protective provider, the energy of the warrior, because the ones we're talking about are the kings the true kings. Because I said before, people out there, you know, taking upon nicknames and saying all these different things and not really overstating the energy of and responsibilities of the titles. <laughs> I forgot to turn on my dog on Bluetooth. Sorry. Uh, forgetting to to take into consideration the responsive, energetic responsibilities of these titles. I understand why we say, you know, king and queen to each other. It's, a, you know, a sign of respect and rem remembering who you are. But there were responsibilities that come with the title. Emperor, Empress, that's even a larger responsibility. Gods and goddesses, that's an even larger responsibility. So while it may sound cute and it may sound sweet and it may even empower you to some level, do you understand the responsibilities of the titles? Most people do not, and they want to get themselves all messed up because that energy comes crashing in on top of them, and they have no idea how to handle it. So when I talk about the warrior, you know, the, the ultimate protective provider, he is a king. And I was talking to, who was I talking to? Somebody in reference to them. These are the men, oh, one of my perfect clients. These are the men who go out there and work themselves into the ground with so little appreciation they don't complain if they start fussing and complaining or not or, or start really vocalizing what's on their minds that means they're at a breaking point 
And because most people around them just assume that they're going to keep carrying the loads that they've placed upon their back, that they miss the signals. That's why some of these, some of these men are dropping dead of heart attacks. Because they are brokenhearted, because there's no appreciation or true honoring and cherishing of who they are. You want a strong man? Do you understand how to, I say this all the time. Do you understand how to care for him? You want that protective provider? You want that strong and silent type? Do you understand how to reach him? Do you understand how to be present for him? Are you able to create that safe space, uh, space for him to be able to come and rejuvenate and restore himself? They need restoration. You cannot go, just like we do. Come on, I'm speaking. I think about ladies because we're out there. Well, I'm not out there doing it, uh, but I have been out there in that corporate world, out there in the world with the J-O-B and you're working and you're doing this. Remember, I was raising a family. And you're out there doing all this stuff and you're pushing, 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 hustle, grind, all these different things. How do you feel behind it? And we have the capacity to talk to people and get things off our chest and invent and do whatever you need to do to take some of that load off of us. But that truly strong and silent man, he really doesn't. He may have some close friends, but even them, unless they're like truly, truly, truly bonded in a way that just is sometimes rare for men, where they can actually be honest and talk about their vulnerabilities, talk about the times they don't feel safe, talk about the times that they feel uneasy, talk about the times that they're, they're, they're scared of failing. If they don't have someone they can really talk to, like, like a guy buddy, most of them have great friends, but most men do not sit around talking and having conversations like I'm just saying. Because they're also, depending on the level where they are and who's being seen and who is being seen as the leader and that warrior, that ultimate protector, the one I'm talking about, he usually is the leader of the pack. So, and for him to stay in that leadership position, he cannot show many signs of weakness. Because the ones coming up that want to take his place will take that weakness and do their best to run him into the ground. So that's where you come in as a woman who overstands self, who is in the space, which again, that priestess energy, the healer, the nurturer, the, the soulful connection, because we are tapping into divine energy. There's no depletion of self because we are limitless in our flow. That's where you come in with all your beauty, your laughter, your joy, because we are prosperity. So the prosperity automatically comes with us because we're moving through our truth. And then you can look at this man and you understand how to speak to him, how to touch his heart, how to touch his spirit. Because here's a kicker, when they sense it, they're usually baffled because they're kind of wondering, are you real? Because there's some women that have a great facade Talk to one of my sons about all these these so-called woke people that really aren't woke. How do you call it? We call it fake woke. So I'm like, yeah, they're interesting, aren't they? But he was just saying, you know, some of these women that you think are tapped in, and then you go deeper into conversations and realize they still haven't really worked on self. You know, okay, which is okay. That's fine. As long as they realize they need to continue working on self, but so many people still don't want to do the work on self. And why they call it shadow work? got to do it so when you come in as that embodied priestess not saying you have to be perfect because once again these women studied for years I have studied for years I have studied for decades I'm still learning and I have a ton of wisdom okay I can say that with absolute confidence because of how I handle my life and my life experiences. Even the difficult times, the times that honest and truly people try to break me and I have had folks do some things that literally have just crushed me. Just the emotional and the mental parts of it have crushed me when I was younger. But the beautiful thing once again is because I am tapped in to a higher power. I am not in the way that folks want to give it to me because I'm not detached. There's, there's no need for me to have a middleman. I'm going straight to the source now in the conversation. I love guidance. I love reassurance from others. Absolutely. But if I'm in a situation that's got me and my back up against the wall, when I finally can like focus for two seconds and be like, okay, wait a minute. <clears throat> Thank you. But I need to go straight to source. And that's what I'm going to go sit with and talk to. 
And I have some stories I can share that are so beautiful and so amazing. I won't share them here at Wealthy Wife. I may save them for Spiritual Doula, my other business. Because have you noticed they're kind of merging now because I want to bring some aspects of Spiritual, spiritual Doula into it. But I, once again, I'm speaking from experience, not just from wishful thinking. So being that woman who understands, once again, how to be present with the masculine, a man who truly embodies the masculine energy, that warrior energy. Ladies, when you are tapped into them and you can really be present with them so they can actually relax and enjoy themselves and just be at ease, it is the most amazing, amazing thing. And I'm so grateful that I, I, that I am that space. I'm thinking of someone very, very, very important to me now who I am very happy that I am that space for him. Learning him. He's learning about me. And as we have conversations and I watch him relax and he opens up and, you know, and he opens up deeper, that's a privilege. That's an honor. And it is definitely a definite blessing because I do enjoy his company very, very much. And vice versa. <laughs> he enjoys mine. So if you have not signed up for the master class yet, what are you waiting for? I always ask you guys this question because you listen and you love what I do. And like I said, but some of you, obviously some do participate. And but the rest of you are still hanging on, hanging back. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want to really understand how to be present with men, especially if you're talking about affluent, rich, and wealthy men, the ones who really, this works also for up and coming men, the average man, but you know here you're looking to be spending time with affluent, rich, and wealthy men. These are the men I'm definitely talking about because these are warriors. You're not gonna become a businessman and really successful woman without knowing how to go out there and fight the good fight, so to speak, because the business world is still dominated by men, especially in the categories where we're finding these men involved. Yes, women are sprinkled through it, but most of them are acting like men too. Energetically, they're men too. They may look like a woman, but energetically, they're a man. They're not looking for her. She's competing with them too. They're like, shit, got to compete with the guys. I got this gorgeous, and she's beautiful, but man, she's, but her energy is a dude. So when they run across someone like me, my goddaughters, my muses, who actually is embodying womanhood, is embodying, is embodies the feminine energy, you're like a breath of fresh air, a cool drink of water on a hot day, the oasis in the desert. They crave you. And they don't always know what to do with you initially. That's where we learn how to speak to them and we offer guidance and offer assistance and learn how to listen to their questions and things or, and know how to speak with them to act, go deeper for information that they may need. But if you're serious about this, what are you waiting for? The special tuition is still up. I haven't changed it because once again, I extended out the uh, day. So I thought it would be fair to keep it up for, you know, for a few more days. Go ahead and tap on the link in the uh, description section. Get yourselves enrolled in the course. It officially starts, like I said, on Saturday, August 21st, 3 p.m. Eastern. You will, when you enroll in the course, it'll take you to the online academy. There is an audio and some questions and homework for you, preliminary homework, pre-class, live masterclass homework. Remember, this is a six weeks masterclass, so there will be six sessions on on six different, on six consecutive Saturdays once we start on the 21st. But before that class, you do have homework because there are things I want you thinking about and beginning to do some self-evaluation on. So once again, come join us. I've got some beautiful ladies already enrolled in the course. Come join us. This is, once again, such a magical time. Learning how to be the priestess. Learning how to move in your sacred energy as a woman. And all of the beautiful things that that entails so that you can be present for that warrior, the ultimate protector provider. So anyway, have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you in class. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.